It is, <laughs> stop laughing, it is Tuesday night. And as you all know, this is my favorite time of the week. I am always happy to be here. I'm always happy to be here on Beyond Potential Live Life Your Way because it's an opportunity for me to share my ideas, um, invite new people to the show, um, and to get different points of view, to see what engages people in their lives, what people are committed to, what they're up to in their jobs, in their careers, their business, and how they got to be the way they are, right? Sometimes I have people on who have businesses that they thought about, knew about that they wanted to do, or careers that they wanted to do when they were very young people. And they have actually stepped into those arenas and they're extremely happy, right? And I am a firm believer that we're supposed to do what we love and what generates us. We're wired for that. And truly, none of us are designed, the human being wasn't designed to sit in an office in a cubicle doing things they don't love for money right? I went to um, a couple of events last week. Last week, I went to a few events. And um, what I heard was, if you're looking for a position, and maybe you're in school doing an MBA or doing a, um, a career, um, so there's, I heard that somebody said that companies, companies are not interested in what you're up to, right? They want you to be interested in what they're up to. They don't want you being interested in something outside of the job. Literally, I thought it was a myth. I mean, I haven't been an employee for like over 20 years, right? And um, even when I was an employee, I had no clue about this, that they literally want your blood, right? And, and I really find it hard to believe. I think, I think it personally is an exaggeration in my world, but... I don't know if somebody's out there and they have a job and their bosses want their blood. I'd love to hear from you. But anyway, so they want their blood. What I heard was um, if you have a certification, say, for instance, you've done CPR or uh, you've done um, some some kind of training that is not in alignment with the actual job that take you off your resume. They don't give a damn. And I'm like, no, this can't be true. Because if I've got somebody on, um, on my job who has CPR, you damn straight, I want to be sitting next to that guy, right? Because if something, ha especially if the EMS and those people have to come up in the elevator, 25 floors or 50 floors, I want the guy that has CPR in my corner. So not knowing who can do that, is like, for me, quite frightening. It's quite shocking and quite frightening. Hi, Laurie, how are you? So, yeah, so um, it's, like I said, it is not normal for us to sit in a cubicle or at a desk for 14, literally, sometimes, 14 hours a day, maybe 16, because what, when you get up in the morning, so that you get up at, say you get up at seven, you're in the shower, you have to be out of the house by eight. You have to get on the, you have to get on the, uh, the subway, right? That's already, what, nearly three hours, right? Then you have to go to work, like say, just say for nine in some cases, right? And then you work and then you have to get home. So you have to add in, if you add in the travel time and your decompression time, that's a whole bag of hours, right? That's not, a, that's like my friend's granny used to say, that's a whole heap, because she said it just like that, whole heap of hours. So it really is important that you do something that you like, right? That you enjoy, that you're passionate about, because it makes time go away quickly. It actually has you be creative. It actually has you be fun, right? Um, so I, I just, you know, I remember when I was, I, I mean, when I was working, when I was an employee, I loved the people. I don't necessarily, I didn't necessarily love the jobs that I was doing. But what I did love were the people that I worked with. 
And if I could have put those, miniaturized all those people and put them in my pocket and feed them muffin crumbs, right? I would have taken, with, taken them with me in my life. Well, of course, you know, you can't do that. I, I haven't found the recipe for that yet. So, you know, but when I decided to like leave jobs, I just left because I really am committed to being happy. And when I've discovered, when I've asked people what it is for them to be happy, like I had a young lady call me today and I asked her, what would her life look like if she were happy? And her answer, oh, my God, it was so sad because, like, I mean, not sad, like, oh, but, like, wow, is this what we've, we're coming to? Where 23-year-olds don't know what it is to be happy for themselves. I think that's really, really sad, right? She was 23 years old, and um, she didn't know what that looked like. She didn't know what it would take for her to be happy. Hi, Kirk. Hi, Paul. So just answer the question, what is it like? For you to be happy what does it take for you to be happy and if you know what that is right like how would you know what would it look like if you were happy in your life what does it look like so I always say what does it look like feel like taste like what's the texture of your happiness right so I, I personally think that the foundation of life should be starting from I want to be happy right and then from there you can build on what that happiness looks like. So, you know, I mean, life is easy, but is it sometimes it's just not easy, right? Life is easy if we're in alignment with the things that we say we want to do, right? Life is not easy when we're out of alignment and we're not doing the things that we want to do. And doing the things that we want to do takes focus. It takes being generative. It takes being creative and, and like, you like you put it in a you put it in a, uh, a, a for me you put it in like a plastic bag like the plastic bag is the foundation of joy or the brown bag foundation of joy and it holds all the things that you want in your life so yeah last week was a like a, for me like a reality um, not a reality because it's not my reality but it's not my reality right? But it is people's reality. Um, but it was a, a, a taste of what it looks like out there in the world for people, some people, not all people, who have nine to fives and um, or have jobs that they're not happy in or trying to find themselves through a job. I always, Irene says, I believe in contentment, not necessarily the pursuit of happiness. I think that is a bit of a bit a bit of an american myth say more about that like say say more about what that american myth is for you and you know you could take the liberty of calling in and i'm inviting you to call in because you complimented my bird that bird <laughs> that bird that i painted has gone into some it's gone into an abstract world of i don't even know what like so call in at um irene call in at 877 Four eight zero four one two zero. I would like to mash it up with you about the contentment you believe in and not necessarily the pursuit of happiness, right? Well, we've all seen that movie, The Pursuit of Happiness. He was miserable selling those, what was it, x-ray machines or some machine that he, some kind of machine, little machine that he was running around San Francisco with and um, until he discovered and saw the happy people going to their jobs and he wanted to know what that was about. And he found out. And that was his pursuit. He was pursuing happiness for himself. And he didn't know what it looked like until he saw what it looked like. And I think all of us, that's our job. I, I believe that's our job to be happy. I mean, my God, babies come in and all they want to do, like they eat, right? So they like, I say they suck, right? You know, baby bottles or nipples. They shit and they sleep. And they, and they giggle, they might smile, <laughs> you know, they might do a smile, but genuinely, if you take care of those basic needs, they're happy, right? And if you don't take care of those basic, basic needs, it's like putting them in a cubicle and tell them to use a computer, right? So um, yeah, call in, I'd, lo I'd love to hear that. So that was my experience last week. What else has been going on with me? Um, I literally cut my finger 
you know, I cut my, I cut my in between my fingers. Right. And you know, when you actually have, you don't realize how important all parts, what I didn't realize how important all parts of my body is until like something is not working the way you want it. Right. So here's the thing. I grazed it on the door in my building and now it looks like a corn, like, like a, a corn between my finger. So I have to bandage it and keep it moist. Another thing that happened to me this week, which I'm really happy about, I mean, I've been consistent, but I haven't been, I've been consistent. And it's one of these things that will show up if I remain consistent. I lost at, from April 23rd until today, I've lost six pounds, right? Six pounds of chub, <laughs> right? Um, I went to the doctor, she weighed me and she goes, oh, you've lost four pounds. I said, oh, really? And she goes, yeah, oh, that's a total of six pounds in, you know, those many days. And I was like, she said, what are you doing? And I said, well, I've been drinking water. I've been eating consistently. I've been exercising. And the, the hummer, the hummer on what I've been doing is I've been going to bed on time. I've been getting sleep. And so here's what happens when I get sleep. When I go to bed at 9.45, 10 o'clock, 10.30, I go to bed. Maybe I'll do some reading. Maybe I'll listen to some meditation. Maybe I'll listen to a story. I'll do something. But what I am not doing is eating. I'm not going to the refrigerator. I'm not running across the street to Connecticut Muffin. Um, um, I, I'm not running across the street to Connecticut Muffin to get licorice or some kind of something to put in my mouth, right? Because I have to be mindful what I eat. So sleep has been like a wonderful um, contribution to my life and my waistline. So um, yeah, so if you want to lose weight, go to bed on time. Because not only do you get sleep, but you're, it keeps you at the refrigerator. <sighs> yes, life, life. I have been experiencing, yes, I have been experiencing some really, hey, Red Cherry, really deep experiences um, over the last week that I literally, like yesterday, just today when I was coming in, I wrote a, um, I wrote a, I put, I put a, um, a variety of pictures of myself on my website. And if you are, let's see, let's see, let's see. If you are, not that one. If you are, if you have access to my website, you should go in and have a look, right? Because um, this is, uh, this is kind of like um, me reacting to um, my experiences that I'm having um, in my world right now, right? With some people who are being extremely naughty for want of a better way to express. So, all right. So, you know what? I'm gonna read this to you guys when I come back. All right, so we're gonna take a break and we'll be right back. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. Are you stuck in a rut? Negative thoughts, feelings, and conversations got you down? Hi, I'm Noreen Sumter, The Potentiator. Tune in every Tuesday at 9 to 10 p.m. Eastern Time and listen for new ideas on my show, Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way, on talkradio.nyc. Who do you want to connect with? Are you an entrepreneur or intrapreneur looking to build your following? Welcome to our show. Follow Me Friday with Joan and Priya. Tune in every Friday at noon Eastern on talkradio.nyc. We're, We're your digital, digital connectors. connectors. Woo woo! <laughs> <laughs> Talk. 
Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. And we're back. This is Noreen Sumter on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And uh, we are talking about, we're going to be talking about a program that I'm launching, but we're just having a general chat up about, um, you know, life. So we have, you know, I was going to read um, my, what I wrote, but we have a guest on the line and, you know, we, she's not, oh, she's not here yet. She'll be here shortly. So hi, Alison, Alexa, and Marie-Jean. Hey guys, how are you doing? So um, this is just a gist of what I've been dealing with in these last few, few um, days with people. Okay. So my, I wrote, I smile a lot, I laugh a lot, and I beg you, don't, and I put tech because I'm West Indian, so don't tech this or take this smile or laughter for granted. I honor my word. I love you only because I love myself. I don't know everything. In fact, I don't know anything. My life's not static. It's always changing. I know what I know, and I respect what you know. And together, we can create big things. Hold on. Here we go. I can't open this bloody thing. Go. All right. What's going on here? Right? Together, we can own, we can, we can create big things or big things. We can create big things, right? Judge me, who cares? Hate me if you dare. You, your hate doesn't penetrate my love. My daddy couldn't read, my mummy could. Together they made, made me, together they raised me, taught me to own my voice, speak my truth, and more than anything, march to my own beat. I bought the drum. I live life my way, you don't have to love me or like me, but you will respect me. Or in the words of Queen B, as they, Beyonce, bow down, bitches. Bow down. Bow down. Seriously. You know, because, you know, I wrote that because people will try you. People will try you. But if you've tried yourself, if you tested yourself, if you know yourself, if you've gone beyond the beyond of yourself and welcome the beyond of the beyond of yourself, will take risks, will go places, go into spaces that you've never done before. You know, you're just able, I'm just able, and you will be able to take on things that you didn't know, that you didn't know that you didn't know. Right. So, you know, what I'm learning in terms of take as you know, it's like as you get older in your life, you realize that no one can stop you but you. No one can cause you upset or harm but you. People can say and do and try to trick you into, you know, taking things on that don't work for you. But if you know you, if you know yourself, you can say to them, thank you for the offer. Thank you for the opportunity. But that motherfucker don't work for me. Okay? It don't work for me. And you can see their bullshit coming 10 miles down the road, and you can actually see it before they even created it. Right? So it's like, you have to be present. We have to be present. We have to be clear. We have to be honest with ourselves. We have to create ourselves and like really stand in our power and so i really just want to go into as i go into this i feel like i'm ranting but i don't care because you know what what i've discovered in my life is that i'm the only one that's going to live my life only one i'm the only one that's going to feel my pain and my upset and my disappointment and if i can't say what it is without you know, causing more upset, breaking, burning down the house. Because I used to burn down the house, right? I used to burn down the house, right? And 
I decided that burning the hound down the house is not burning down the house, it's burning down this house, right? The house of me, burning it down. And so I will not allow anyone and their destructive ways to penetrate my life. I just can't. It doesn't work for me because it brings me out of my face and then causes me to burn things down, right? So I'm not committed to I'm committed to living my life, which is owning my voice, speaking my truth, and living life my way. And so inside of that, I created a project. I created a program, which is called 10 Tips. It was 10 Tips, 10 Days. And I launched it as a pilot for um, a few people that decided that they wanted to do it. And the 10 tips, 10 days, people got said that they got value out of it. It was really good for them, but it wasn't long enough. They wanted to do 10 tips, 10 weeks. Now, 10 weeks is three months, right? And inside of that three months, every week, a tip, every week, a coaching call, every week, a really straightforward, honest conversation, like going places that you wouldn't really go in a group ordinarily, but what's been created is a space for people, which we're all in this space for each of and every one of us to, to deal with our stuff. We have to deal with our stuff together. And my group is a group where men and women come together because yes, I used to work with all women all the time, but I realized that, you know what? I don't live in a world with just men and women. I live in a world with all kinds of people, all kinds of choices. And the, we are richer for the diversity and the mix that we're in. Not this bullshit. And, uh, you know, if I offend anyone, I, I apologize, but I really don't apologize. But this bullshit pussy power business whereby, you know, on the weekends, we're all marching together and it's all lovely and it's all, you know, lovely jubbly, as we used to say in school growing up. But when it comes to Monday morning, when we're back at work, when we're back at the job competing for the peanuts, right? And you're the little black girl over here and I, you're the little white girl over here. And the never the two should come together. Never is there an understanding. Never is there, you know, like really like going into courageous spaces, not these safe spaces that we have so created, so space where so safe that we're not communicating, right? Or where we're so safe that if somebody says something and it, and it hurts your feelings, you like break down into a cold sweat and start crying. No, we need courageous spaces where shit can be faced. And so inside of this group, Everybody comes in to this courageous space and they actually bear their souls. I've had people in my workshop these last few 10 weeks talk about things that they're suffering, like, you know, fighting in court, custody battles, you know, where one person is making my client feel like they're worthless and nothing and making them, you know, women have a hard enough time when they have children trying to decide for themselves whether they're a good mother or not. And then you've got like somebody that you're fighting against. It could be a man or a woman or an attorney that's making you feel like a load of shit when you always feel, you feel like a load of shit anyway, right? And you can't, like, you're trying to have a court case. You're trying to resolve your life. And so what has turned out for my people, this people on my course. Hi, Natalie. People on my uh, uh, um, workshop is that they're able to like really own their voice, speak their truth. It's that my thing and live life their way. That means they step into their power. They face that attorney. They feel their pain. They own it. And then they turn it around and use it as fuel to fight for what is they want in their life and what is right. And so I've seen a woman that came in confused, not knowing, step into her power where she is now being her own attorney and really stepping into like owning herself and owning her feelings and really stepping into her life. And it's just so amazing. I've got a man in my workshop who is going for a divorce and his conversation was, I have to tread lightly, right? I have to tread lightly. It's like, what is it? I'm walking on eggshells in my house. And I remember saying to a friend of mine once about walking on eggshells, I was 220 pounds, right? 
220 pounds. Can you imagine me walking on a fucking eggshell? I can't even imagine it, right? So why should anyone, because we can't, even if you're 100 pounds, even if you're a baby, you cannot walk on an eggshell. So why is it that he had, well, he has now had, and I said to him, you have to have a conversation with your, you know, your ex-wife. And he was like, you, are, you don't understand. She's a B-I-T, she's a bitch, right? She's a bitch. He referred to her as the bitch. She's being bitchy, she's a bitch. Well, nobody is a bitch, but we can be bitchy right? Nobody is an asshole, but we can be an asshole. Everybody is a human being who's being something and you get to choose what you want to be. This man literally had the conversation, even though he was fearing it, he had the conversation with the wife. They settled it. She said to him, I'm not going to throw you out. Get yourself sorted. You know, we'll do the divorce. His literally the relationship with her changed, right? I, there's just so many stories and it's like, I'm not saying that I am the coach for you. I might not be, right? But it doesn't matter. Then don't come. Don't come. But if I'm the coach for you, my commitment is that at the end of 10 weeks, you're going to get you in such a way that you didn't know it was even possible, right? Because I don't give you nothing. I always say, and I said to these people when they um, started on the workshop, I don't give you nothing. I got nothing for you. You've got everything that you need for yourself. And you know, seven weeks in, I said, you know what? I got nothing for you. And they were like, you know, you're so right. You have nothing for us because we have everything ourselves and they get in their lives. And it is freaking wonderful, right? So basically what I'm saying is like, if you want to literally take on your life in a way that you have not taken it on before, come, come and join me and look out for my information, join me, call me, ask me questions, you know, dig in what's possible. What can I get? How can I get it? Who do I have to be to be in this course? Who, who do I have to be to get a result? Right. Call me and I'll share that information with you. I got two more minutes and I saw somebody who um, is online that I have a huge, huge respect for her. Um, these days because she's stepping into an arena where literally uh, it's like being in Rome and being in the Colosseum and uh, her head can be lobbed off in any moment. Natalie, Natalie, Alicia, if you're still on the line, I want you to call in and tell me what it has you so inspired, what has you so riled up about this abortion, um, um, this abortion act in in Atlanta in, in Alabama call me and tell me so that you can share this podium with people who are listening to the show so we're going to take a one minute break we're going to take a break and we'll be right back you're listening to the talking alternative network <laughs> Do you love or are you intrigued about New York City and its neighborhoods? I'm Jeff Goodman, host of Rediscovering New York, a weekly show that showcases New York's history and its extraordinary neighborhoods. Every Tuesday live at 7 p.m., we focus on a particular neighborhood and explore its history, its vibe, its feel, and its energy. Tune in live every Tuesday at 7 p.m. on talkradio.nyc. Talking Alternative Radio, 24 hours a day. So I was um, looking to invite Natalie Alicia Gold into the, um, onto the call, um, onto the show, because Natalie is in a battle for our reproductive rights as women in America. Um, and, I mean, like, really, where are we going? What are we doing? Are we going back in time? This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. I just spoke to a woman in New Orleans yesterday, and she was telling me that um, 
the governor of Baton Rouge or Louisiana just um, um, took equal pay off the table for women. Like, really? Soon they'll be telling all of us that we can't go to work anymore, that they're going to be distributing um, aprons. <laughs> what? No, we won't be able to buy shoes anymore. They'll be distributing aprons at where, where they would at CVS, and you you get you everybody every woman gets a coupon to go pick up her apron, right? Because we're going to be strapped to the sink and feeding uh, babies like a baby on both breasts and strapped to the sink. Look, this is bullshit. Like seriously, it is bullshit, right? Um, most European countries have had. Uh, abortion since six, 1965. Canada, like I have read this whole thing, but my, my memory can only contain so much. Hi, Deb. So here's the thing. Like, fortunately, I'm in this space now where I don't have to have a baby. I can't have a baby. Well, I, don't, I think I can probably have one of those menopause babies with the big head, but you know, that's another story. He like comes out with teeth and a beard, right? But, <laughs> right? But Listen, my reproductive rights are my, is my responsibility. If I want to have a baby, I have a baby. If I don't want to have a baby, I don't have a baby. And I've always felt this ever since I can remember. I can't imagine being 16, 17, 18 and going to my doctor and saying to him, I, you know, can I have an abortion? And he said, no. Well, actually, truthfully, I did go to the doctor. I think I was like 19. And I went to have an abortion and they were like, no, you can't have it, right? At the time, because it was on the national health. And what they were looking at was that I was capable of taking care of a baby. I went ballistic. I like said, well, you know what? Here's the thing. And this is what's going to happen in America. If this actually gets turned back, women are going to die. Women are going to be dying out there, right? Because they're going to be doing it with coat hangers. And they're going to be doing it with bottles of gin. Right. And all kinds of other, uh, 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 you know, fluids and implements and and, and teenage girls are going to be dying. Right. It's going to be a bloodbath if that gets turned around. So, you know, there's people like Natalie Alicia who is fighting like the other day um, she was out going to the BBC and she's in a taxi talking about it. And there was these. Two men who need to bow down, bitches, bow down, right, to her, who were talking about, they said, oh, it looks like, oh, it looks like she's really exhausted. It looks like she needs to get some sleep. It looks like she needs to have a couple of babies. I was like, really, seriously? If you got nothing, you know, you think about it. You know, this situation will affect every single person in this nation. Why? I read recently that an 11-year-old girl got raped. And if this thing is repealed or turned around, she can't have an abortion. So if you're like, if, if you're a product of incest, if you get raped, you're going to have to have your attacker's baby. What the hell is that? What are we thinking? You know what I assert? I assert that this is an opportunity. One, I assert that probably what's actually happening is that the white race is not growing as fast as they'd like it to. <clears throat> the people of color are having babies. And because the, this is not, you know, white people are not having as many babies and their numbers are dwindling, they're worried about what is going to actually take place in the future. So if you, ref this, I'm just making this up. I don't know if this is true because I really don't read newspapers and I really don't listen to the news and all that. I'm just making this up right? But I believe if, if white people are not creating as many babies, these men are fearful that, and, and there's a lot of mixing going on, right? There's a lot of race mixing. So purity is not pure anymore, right? And so if they repeal abortion, that's the right word, right? Repeal abortion. Um, they can force white women to have babies then it will increase the population, right? I don't really think they'd turn it around for me. They could give really 
give a toss. They'll give a toss if, it, if we outnumber. But I think really what it is, is because the white race, the numbers are dwindling in America, right? So that's why it's turning around. It's bullshit. It's, oh, Irene says you nailed it, right? It's bullshit because what you will be creating is a, because what you'll be creating is a race of women or a, a variety of women who cannot afford to have abortions, who are afraid. And so it's creating another form of poverty, right? Keeping the woman down, another form of poverty. You know what I mean? So this is what's really going on. It's, it's like, remember, Irish people, it was no Irish, no dogs and something else. I don't remember the other thing. No Jews, right? And again, when the race probably started to dwindle, you add in the Irish, right? You add in some dogs. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> and then later on, maybe, maybe, maybe some Jews. But you guys have had it pretty like rough, right? Because like you're like the scapegoats and like you're sort of in the realm of with the blacks, right? Um, so I think that's what's really going on. I, it's not a real legitimate practice. And it's a woman. It's an old white woman. That's trying to, what is that? It doesn't make any kind of sense to me. So it is time for us, I would say, like to wake up. Our little itty bitty problems that we have, that we, they, there are a gazillion programs out there, mine included. There are a gazillion workshops that can help you wake up. You just have to find one. But the fact of the matter is we need you to wake up. We need to wake up as a race, all of us, all of us, right? We need to come together. And when I say come together, America needs to stop killing black men, making black men evil, making black women evil, and killing us off, creating us wrong. White people, the poor white people, they need to shut the fuck up and realize that they're poor right? And if we come together, black, poor, you know, this $20,000, you're middle class in, in, in somewhere out there in, I don't know, America. Don't make no kind of sense. It's just to, you know, blow smoke up your ass and make you feel that you're better than the black man and you're not, right? You're not. And so if you really, if we like literally opened our eyes, opened our eyes, we could come together and it could literally be we, the people, not white people, not black people, but we, the people, we're breeding, we're mixing, whether we want to know it or whether we want to accept it or not, it's not going to be anybody pure race. You've seen, I've seen mass racists like KKK, Nazi skinheads, having black girlfriends, Puerto Rican girlfriends, Asian girlfriends on the side, get real people. We need to wake up, you know? And so, I don't know. It's so, I, I, I don't know. I'm just, I say, keep your hands off my vagina. Keep your hands off my uterus. And you know what? Maybe we need to create funding for, if this thing passes, we need to create funding so that people can take trips abroad and get their abortions. Not just rich people, all people, right? Because we can't, like women are just beginning to find their voices, get some freedom, have our choices, like really step into it. And, uh, you know, we can't go back. We cannot go back. What is Irene saying? We need another March on Washington. Honey, we can sit right here on our computers. We can shut cities down. We can walk to work. We can shut down the, 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 parts of them, you know, that make us stronger. Like if we shut down the MTA, if we all decided that we're not going to do MTA and we bike to work and we carpool to work, don't you think the MTA could be clean in, in less than a week? If we came together rather than bitching about bullshit, don't you think things would change in this city if we came together? I do. I think, I, I think it would. You know, a march on Washington, great. You know, but if we march from our various cities and not took public transportation, we can shut down airlines. We can shut down 
all kinds of stuff. But we need to stop bickering and we really need to, I mean, it's, it's, I'm sure I'm probably just looking at it a very simplistic way. And sometimes simple is the way, but I'm looking at it a very simplistic way. And I'm sure other people would be able to educate me because like I said, I know some things, but I don't know everything, but it, I respect what you know. And if we come together, we can make bigger things. We can make bigger movements, bigger moves, right? As Cardi B says, we can make money moves, but we can make life. <laughs> I'm so freaking corny. <laughs> no, together we can make big moves and everybody gets impacted. Everybody gets a piece of the cake. So, you know, I'm. Uh, uh, what did she say? This, this shit all happened in the, in the 60s and 70s with the new generations need to take charge. Look. We're old people now, right? We need to support the young people so that young people can come in and make the changes. It's not going to be us. It's the young people that's going to make changes. And that's what they're there for, right? They don't, I don't want young people living my life. I want them to live their own lives. You know, I can tell them some things, but I can't tell them everything. And like I said to the young girl today, you know, I said, you're 23 years old. 23 goes really fast, really fast. And when people said that to me when I was 23, no, I was like an old person at 23, actually. (laughs) I'm young now, but seriously, I was like an old person. (laughs) Right? Um, uh, So I said to her, like, 23 goes really, really fast. And uh, it's by the time you blink your eyes, you're going to be like 50. And she laughed. She goes, Oh, I heard that before. I said, look, it's like riding a bicycle, right? I can stand behind you. I can push you. I can hold you up. You can lean on me and we can move the bike. But like, as they say in Landmark, the only thing that I can't give you is balance. I can't give you balance, right? Having you realize that, having you realize that 23 goes really, really fast is like me trying to give you balance. I can't give you that understanding. You have to, and we all have to experience it for ourselves. So I re- do I have another segment? I have one more segment left. And Irene, I would love for you to call in again. And uh, they are bad. The, the u- new generations are badass, but we're, we've, we've left them with a raw deal. You know, we've got this guy, Robert, the billionaire black guy that just, just paid $40 million for the, uh, um, the young people's education. That was a huge deal. Do you know? Their parents are probably so happy because I would be so happy. Those kids are so happy. They've got a clean slate. They got a clean slate. Oh, my God. I mean, I only paid $8,000 to go to school because, you know, the woman in human uh, and financial aid liked me. And every time a grant came through, she was like, Noreen, there's a grant. Noreen, this is this. Your GPA is good. We're going to give it to you. And so I ended up only paying $8,000. So I can't even imagine, and I could never have imagined what it was like to come away with a student loan. But anyway, we'll be right back. Irene, call in. You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network. <laughs> Best designs for your life start at home. I'm David Thiergartner, interior designer and host of At Home. Listen live Tuesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Time as we talk to the very best professionals about interior design and the design that's all around us right here on talkradio.nyc. Are you a conscious co-creator? Are you on a quest to raise your vibration and your consciousness? I'm Sam Leibowitz, your Conscious Consultant. And on my show, The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, we will touch upon all these topics and more. Listen live at our new time on Thursdays at 12 noon Eastern Time. That's The Conscious Consultant Hour, Awakening Humanity, Thursdays, 12 noon on talkradio.nyc. TalkingAlternative.com 
And we're back on Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. Um, and we have Irene Anderson on the line. Hi, Irene. Hi, Noreen. It's so nice to see you live. Thank you. You have such incredible energy. Oh, thanks. I, I mean, you know, I, I, if I had a dollar for every time someone said that to me, I wouldn't have to go to work. <laughs> I could just sit home and eat bonbons and watch um, Family Guy. <laughs> Coronation Street, maybe. <laughs> Coronation Street. Are you crazy? <laughs> no. <laughs> so you say here that um, you want the new generations to be badass and shit disturbers like you were. So tell us a little bit. But on that note, I just want you to say they can't be like how you were. They're a new generation, right? They're like they're like two, three, four point oh, right? So. What would I'm you... not so okay. sure that they're that different. I have a daughter who's 30 years old, mm -hmm. and she grew up on picket lines mm -hmm. with me. Mm -hmm. And I protested every... I was a union uh, uh, representative back in the day, and I've had many roles in my life, but for 20-odd years, that's what I did. Mm -hmm. And she, from a very young age... Mm -hmm was with me, or even in the womb, she was with me on the picket line. Mm -hmm. And Kick in. she, although she and I are very different, uh -huh. that she has inherited that kind of activism that I believe still <clears throat> one needs to get out there in the public eye and not necessarily just online. But in the public eye and putting yourself out there so that everyone can see, that they can see, like the young woman in Florida after that uh, horrible, horrible shooting, mm -hmm. came out and talked in public about what her experience was. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of activi activism I want to see from young people. Not just behind your desk, online, signing a petition, that sort of thing. That doesn't, re I, I, I really believe, I, I honestly believe that's not going to get, I mean, it, it, that's part of the, the solution. Mm -hmm. But the biggest part of the solution is putting yourself in the Face yeah, but everybody in, does it differently, though, the right? Front, there's so many different ways. Politicians, to, so that they can't ignore you. Right, but there's so many different ways to to be active. So many yes. different ways, right? So she chose to come out and share that. But yes. somebody who is sending out that petition and making sure it's signed is doing what they're doing. Somebody else is doing another form of disturbance. Somebody is out there. You know, some people are out there. Um, I was out in Times Square last week and young black children were talking about schools and the different kinds of um, teaching and how the teachers were being and how they're not being taught the way they would like to be taught. And these kids were out there and they published a paper and everything, right? So, you know, you got to get there. There are a lot of different um, causes that people are fighting for, right? Yes, you know what, Noreen, I think what's missing mm -hmm. is back in the day when we were protesters and, and doing what we did, mm -hmm. we had um, people... I only went to rock against there's, racism. There's, you know, a, a very pronged approach to, mm -hmm. to getting to the result that you want. And so, yes, protesting on the streets is one of them writing petitions uh, and now back then we didn't have the internet but you know there's a lot of different ways that, that one can get your message across mm -hmm. and I think that our younger generation needs uh, needs and, and needs the tutelage I guess if you want of the older generation to understand that there are many many ways in which to Agitate. Get your message across. Yeah, but I'm going to say this, right? I don't know. There used to be this thing. It's like when I was growing up, it's don't trust old people. 
right? So today, I am now one of the old people. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You're younger than I am. Well, you might be surprised, okay? <laughs> um, <laughs> and so young people have to do it their way. I'm not going to, if they ask me my thoughts and opinions, I'm going to say, yeah. But like, you got to remember when you're younger, you have, a, you have a lower fear factor, right? So you'll throw yourself out there and you can do all this stuff. But as you get older, as we can see, the people from the 60s who were out there and you know, free love and flower power, flower power, and you know, ban the bomb, and you know, uh, contraceptives, and all this kind of stuff. Most of them became corporate people, and they forgot. A lot of them forgot what they fought for, right? And they raised comfortable children, right? Who are, you know, privileged, right? It's not. Look. The kids have just got to do what the kids have got to do because, you know, we're old and tired. Literally, we're old and tired. And this is their world. And we've made a cock up of it, basically. We've cocked it up, right? And so this is what we've left them with. Garbage, miles and miles of garbage, violence, aggression, racism, sexism, all kinds of stuff. This is what we've left them with. You know, well, so I, I, I may, I may just, I may respectfully disagree. You with can. That we cocked it up because I remember <clears throat> as, you know, I mean, I'm 64 years old and I don't mind admitting that. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that I cocked anything up. I okay. believe that I taught my, my child to be a responsible human being. And, uh, we, I was recycling before it ever became you know popular right and so yeah i mean i mean i hear what you're saying and recycling is now you know yes you were doing it probably when when you were in your 20s yes right so now we've got 40 odd years to, that it's to the point now where we are actually recycling and it is the young children that young people not children yes young children too that are actually going into the oceans. I saw an ocean bin the other day where the water goes in, the garbage goes in, and they can take <clears> the garbage out. But yet... I, I'm going to ask you a question. Have sure. you ever been to India? No, not yet. I'm actually scared to go to India. I, well, don't be scared. It's lovely. <laughs> I spent three months working there, mm -hmm. and I was absolutely... Uh, I worked in a call center that was right across the street from a... Um, uh, garbage dump mm -hmm. and every night we would watch the garbage burn that's the only way they knew how to deal with the garbage they yeah. because the education wasn't there and when i let the, yeah but who the day that, okay. the day that i left india mm -hmm. my driver took a bottle of water drank out the last dregs of it and threw it on the ground yeah that's no that was probably normal back then Yes. But, but what I'm saying, like, this is what I'm going to say, right? That, was, that, wasn't that, that wasn't that far back. That was uh, 2008. Yeah, well, I got that. But who is the power? The man that uses the bottle, drinks and throws it away? Or the man that created the bottle and put the stuff in it? Who oh. has the power? Well, clearly you're, you know, it, it, clearly it's in the hands of the corporation. Right. So if the corporations were being responsible and talking about the recycling and educating people about recycling, don't you think we would follow suit? Don't you think? And they were cleaning up. Don't you think something would happen? That man's just doing what he knows to do. Yeah. And the kid that created the bucket or, you know, the sea bucket or, you know, is like cleaning up, cleaning up the ocean with all the miles and miles of toothbrushes and shit right? A lot of those are young people that are doing their best. Oh, and they're doing, um, they're, they're doing some marvelous things, and right. I absolutely applaud what they're doing. Right. And uh, so they I just, I feel over, to be honest, I do feel overwhelmed that our world has gotten to a state where women's rights are are being subjugated 
Well, but we know why women's rights are being subjugated. It's all down to race. White people are becoming outbred, fear mongering, right? If if black people were being outbred, abortion would not be abortion would be legal, and 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 corporations would probably pay for it. Okay, so. We got to call it what it is. And covering it up, you know, as they say, putting icing on a mud pie does not make it a pie. It's just pie with icing, a.k.a. landmark, right? And just to use that. So we got one, we got one more minute, but I really, I just want to say quick, if you could say it quickly so that we can say our closing remarks and I can thank you for coming on the show. Well, it's been lovely speaking with you. I am just amazed at what you have accomplished. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Rock on. I love you. I love you too. Rock on. So this is Noreen Sumter signing off from Beyond Potential, Live Life Your Way. And we can only save ourselves, save ourselves so we can save and protect and take care of each other and the world. Because you know what? When it spits us off, the world will still be there and it will really replenish itself and recreate itself, but we'll be dead. Night! (laughs) You're listening to the Talking Alternative Network.